and welcome back to Japan for our reaction and review to Brainwashed Wow Wow by Seapool. Now, um, this is one of those videos, like all the other videos since we had to restart the channel, where the reaction is actually something you have to open in a separate player. So if you want to see the reaction, pause this video now, click the link in the description below that says watch reaction, and then you can watch my reaction first of all. Otherwise, I'm going to give you the review now. So, are you ready for the review? Have you watched the reaction? Do you even care about the reaction? Do you just want the review? Well, here it comes. <clears throat> okay, so if you saw my reaction, you noticed that I, I drew a lot of comparisons with this and it did feel a lot like a sort of grungy sound to me. Now, there was a lot of things that made this very interesting. And yeah, it was one of those songs, I often talk about this being a phenomenon in Japan, where you get, um, a lot of uh, Japanese bands, unsurprisingly, are influenced by a Western style or a Western genre. But then they have this quality where they add so much detail and so much thought that a lot of the time uh, Western bands don't. I mean, look at a lot of the classic Western uh, songs. I mean, there are, don't get me wrong, there are some amazingly detailed Western songs. But there's also a lot of stuff that's really, really famous that doesn't have a vast amount of complexity to it. It was just a new sound at the time. Um, so I love the fact that Japanese bands often have the ability to take something and make it sound very fresh. Now, whether you consider this grunge, as I called it, or otherwise, this certainly was harking back to the age of uh, sort of 90s music, especially early 90s music. I mean, I was getting feelings of, you know, definitely feelings of things like Nirvana, feelings of things like um, Soundgarden. Um, I've, I've referenced a couple of times before in other things, uh, the band Feeder. I would say this reminds me a lot of Feeder's first couple of albums where they were definitely sort of playing around with grunge sounds. Um Certainly the album uh, Polyphene, I think it was. Yeah, Polyphene, that album, that, that sounded a lot like this as well. Um, and a lot of those... Uh, a lot of those factors are basically in the, you know, you think about grunge and you think about, well, I mean, the word grunge doesn't really help it. Um, you think about what grunge is and we often think of those sort of dark, slow, you know, sort of going towards a sort of head-bobbingly sort of miserable, emo-y feel. That's, a, that's what a lot of people think of when they think of grunge. However, that grungy sound, and this is why I'm sure someone will tell me that there's a, a different definition for the genre when it has, you know, more of a, a sort of a energetic feel. When you get this sort of thing, though, it's got that hyper sort of feel and it feels very um, fast, but it's using those sort of grungy lo-fi sounds. It's using distortion. There were some cool bits with distorted vocals. Um, the difference between the guitar in the, the verses and the chorus was just the amount that the distortion was being pushed a lot. I mean, obviously, I know the playing was different, but the actual tone. Um, there was cool little bits where they played around with the distortion of the guitar. Um, the drums were kind of, they weren't really cutting so much. They were just this sort of thumping sound. You know, it was, it, it was all very much, like you say, it was grungy. Um, and I mean that as the adjective rather than just the genre term, although also, like I said, I think it was grunge in the genre as well. Um, but it was grungy, but it had an energy more akin to punk. Um, and, you know, it was that sort of, uh, you, you felt it was fast, it was energetic, it's something that you could really go a bit crazy to. And that's what I think made this work, was that they managed to capture all three of those things. I managed to capture that, the mood that grunge gets. I mean, I'm not the biggest grunge addict, but there are some really cool grunge songs out there that I even enjoy. Um, so it managed to catch that sort of lo-fi, uh, uncomplicated quality that grunge had. And yet at the same time, infect it with um, speed and energy. Um, like I say, there are uh, other bands who've done this before, but it was really do well done here. And also detail and attention to detail, attention to little cool little sounds and things that they threw in uh, various places, just in the way that they changed the guitar tone, changed the way it was being played. There was a bit, like I say, where the bass line changed underneath the um, riff, which kind of set uh, offset everything a little bit. Um, just clever little touches that on their own don't sound like a moment of, ooh, what's happening there? But they just sort of slightly change the feel a bit here and there. Um, so, you know, I, I think there was a lot to be said that made this... Um, so, I mean, to give you an example, if someone says, oh, my friend's in a grunge band, again, even as someone who's heard a lot of different variations of grunge music, I'm going to be inclined to thinking this band probably could be a bit boring. Um, but... This is an example of the fact that there is some, some sorts of grungy music that, you know, they don't just rely on plodding along. They actually can, they can get a lot of detail of that sound. Like I said, this is not, a, but I'm not slagging off grunge music. I know every time I do these, I always sound like I'm coming off really one-sided against something. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just like I say, grunge music, as we all know, there is a tendency to uh, lean on the simple a little bit hard. So 
Where this was simple was mostly in the arrangement. It went from sort of verse to chorus to verse, chorus, verse, chorus. There were moments that could have been considered bridges, but they were really little bit more than just a bar here or there where they flipped up the tone. Um, it was basically just a repetition of the same thing. It was very catchy in the way it did it. It had a sort of, um, although I couldn't tell what she was saying, it had a sort of chant long shout along quality, which is very sort of much of the grunge punk variety. Um, it worked. It stayed fresh. Like I say, they used small techniques in how they altered the sounds that the guitar was producing, the way it was being played just a little bit, um, the things that the bass were doing. They altered things just enough to make it not sound like it was genuinely repeating, but also keep it sounding fresh. It wasn't so long that it got stale. They knew not to keep it um, to the point where it got long in a tooth, you know, outstayed its welcome. It was... To be honest, the sort of song that I would throw on very willingly again, and I put it alongside, the reason why I put alongside um, a Bish song that I've quoted a few times really liking. Now, unfortunately, I keep on forgetting the name <laughs> name of the song. It's basically, it's the song which is about death and has zombies in the video. Um, as a zombified Marco in the video. Um, that video, that song on the surface is very different. And that song is very sort of screaming, energetic, everything being shouted at the top of your voice. Well, this is kind of more of a sort of low key, but let's move fast, but let's talk quietly sort of song. Um, but both of them have this quality of basically being very much um, sort of like a carefree blast of sound. Uh, and I do find that although they're approaching that similar sort of grungy, distorted quality from different angles, they come out with a similar quality of being kind of relentlessly, um, relentlessly uh, interesting and yet also incredibly un uncomplicated. So, yeah, it, in a lot of ways, this is, like I say, just a really good approach on the grungy formula. Um, the musicianship, there isn't much to say about it, because like I say, it's, it's being played, it's fairly simple stuff, a bit of guitar picking, simple bass notes, um, strumming here, the drum line was relatively uncomplicated. This isn't the sort of music where you're looking for virtuoso playing, and there's nothing wrong with that, as I've often said before. Um, horses for courses, you play a certain way depending on what you're playing with, uh, what music you're working with. Uh, the songwriting is always more important, and in this case, I think the songwriting was good. It was very aware. I'd be interested to hear more of this band to know how else they approach it. I mean, if all of their songs are like this, there's nothing wrong with that, but um, I, th I find this such an interesting take. Like I say, not 100% original, no, but an interesting take on that grungy sound. The, I would like to know if they have different takes, if their writing is quite varied, if we hear them, um, are they always as, this distorted? Do they do some stuff which is hyper energetic, but maybe not as distorted? Do they do stuff which is, um, you know, sort of grungy again, but from a different approach? You know, I, I'm looking forward to hearing more of this band. Definitely, if you guys are interested, if you've got suggestions. Um, I would say the video was a nice complimentary one as well. It was super 90s, which also helped uh, uh, to sway everything. And like I say, that ending bit where they, um, where's it faded out, there was just little bits of guitar harmonics and just little sounds of the instruments. Again, a very sort of 90s grungy sort of thing to do. The video was full of, um, you know, things like symbolism, like people finger shooting each other and then, you know, someone on the floor, in dead pose, and then there was, it was wheel each other around in a shopping trolley, you know, the shopping cart for Americans, sorry. Um, so, you know, there, there was a lot of imagery and symbolism that was seemed just more just to be actually them just having a bit of fun doing some crazy shots and, you know, things like changing like the, um, the color palette of the video, like it's being done through a filter really quickly on certain points. It had a real sort of grunge vibe to it, a real nineties vibe to it. Um, a lot of nineties punk videos did that as well. I mean, if you, if you watch any of the offsprings, like sort of formative videos in their first couple of albums, it was always just that. It was just them just playing in a room, but then like loads of color effects being done. So it was virtually impossible to tell what was going on. Um, so yeah, I, I like I say, really enjoyed this in its own terms, but I think now it would be interesting to know um, what more there is of this band. I definitely will be inclined to listen to this again. I'm certainly looking forward to hearing more of the band. If you're a fan of the band, let me know more songs I should check out. I think I've already got one other link of theirs that I need to check, so I will go back and have a look for that as well. Um, also, whether you know this band or not, whether you liked it or not, please get in the comments and tell us what you think. I mean, obviously music is about the subjective opinions just as much as anything else. I mean, music is only as enjoyable as you like it. I can only tell you what I think as someone who's worked with music for my entire life, however, entire adult life, however, 
Opinions are really important. So please get in there. Tell us what you think as well. Start the discussion. Remember, you can also continue the discussion on our Discord and Reddit links in the description below, as well as my Facebook and Twitter. Great places to join along as well. And there is the Patreon for you kind, wonderful people who keep this channel going. So if you want to join that, it's greatly appreciated. Either way, thank you so much for getting to the end of the video. That's the most important thing. And until I see you hopefully soon on the next one, for now, ciao, ciao.